Hi guys, uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, get Funk Godot up and working. Um, all of this is going to be thoroughly, or already is thoroughly documented on the Funk Godot um, official documentation website. Um, so if you head to github.com slash Funk Godot, um, it's going to say here full documentation available online. That'll take you to the manual. And there's also a download page, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so here's the manual um, at the top it should say the version of Godot that you need hopefully you already have Godot installed I'm not going to go over that um, github.com slash trench broom slash trench broom take you to the uh, trench room uh, source code scroll down here to the right releases grab the most recent release um, for your system um, and first thing we're going to do is install Funk Godot because that is the uh, part that might not be obvious at least um, right now because uh, it's not on the asset library right so if I open up this Godot project it's pre-made and I go here I go to asset library and I look up Funk Godot whatever it's not going to be there um, so what we need to do is uh, import it uh, if it's there at the when you watch this then go ahead just use that um, but otherwise um, we're going to go to github.com slash Funk Godot we're going to click download Funk Godot we can choose code zip if we want the most recent version, but I recommend going to releases um, and then downloading this zip here, the most recent release. Um, so we've got the most recent trench broom, most recent Funk Godot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do import here, right? So in the asset lib tab of Godot import, I'm going to click on that zip that we just downloaded from the uh, GitHub. I didn't download it. I already had it pre-downloaded and I'm just going to click install wait for that to install, click OK, plugins, enable it, for some reason it's disabled by default and uh, now we need to set up our local configuration so I'm going to go down here Funk Godot local config um, and we got to write here, um, I'm actually going to erase this just so I can talk about it um, we got to write here um, the folders of our trench broom installation and the location of our game um, the location of the trench broom installation is so that Funk Godot knows where to put the configuration files that it's writing for trench broom. The game path uh, directories are provided so that those files can direct trench broom back to our project and it can use our project's resource resources such as textures and models to display the level in the trench broom editor as close as it can to how it will actually be when it's built in Godot. So um, if we take a look at the manual, um, if you want to read about this, please do go to the project configuration tag tab. Um, we'll cover what's up here at the top in a second, but down here at the bottom, they have a paragraph for each entry in this configuration file. So um, read up on that, but I'm just going to tell you what to do. Um, the way to figure out the FGD folder is to open up Trench Broom click new map click open preferences and then down here at the bottom there's a small folder open custom game configurations folder click that it will open in uh, a file explorer of your choice whatever your default file explorer is in my case it's a terminal so I'm gonna do PWD um, if you're on Windows you know you can just click up in the uh, file path the breadcrumbs and uh, copy paste the path to the current folder so I'm just gonna grab this I'm going to control shift C, control C, whatever, um, and cancel, close out. I don't really need trench broom anymore. And I'm going to paste that path here and here. Oh, excuse me. Here. So this is the configuration for the game, this game, um, that will be read by trench broom and also the FGD location. Uh, the only trick is that we do need to actually append the name of the game to the end of this. So I'm calling this game Funk. So at the end we add funk and um, then we want the map editor game path uh, that is the path to our project again to let trench broom know where it is so I'm gonna do home Argus I'm just gonna I know where this is so I'm just gonna write it out um, desktop funk um, that is where I put it and then game paths models folder this is a relative path relative to this one the folder inside of our project folder where we are going to be putting models for trench broom to use to display our entities for example if you have let's say a lion enemy it appears as a lion you have this amazing model in Godot um, but if you place it down in trench broom it's going to appear as like a cube 
unless you provide it with a model. And so Funkado provides a way to take your uh, scenes, so it could take your enemy scene or whatever, and export it to a GLB file, which can then be read in by Trench Broom and used to display your, let's say, enemy spawn point with an actual model of that lion enemy in, in the Trench Broom editor. Um, and so the place where I like to put those is in a subfolder called Trench Broom, or if you have you know maybe multiple uh, editors, you could give it a more generic name like Quake or something. Um, trench Broom slash models. And uh, that's all we need to worry about here. We're going to click export up here. This is sort of a button. It's a co-opted check mark. Um, and if you go down here into the output tab, you should see that it says save settings and it says it saved it to user. So important thing, it saves it to user. That's your user configuration for Godot. That means it won't be shared with any code devs on the project. It won't be uploaded to version control. It actually is outside of this project folder altogether. All right, so next step is we need to create a configuration for Trench Broom for this project specifically. So basically, how should this project handle Trench Broom? How should it talk to Trench Broom? So we right click, create new resource, look up Trench Broom, Trench Broom game config. Uh, I'm gonna call this trench broom config save it open it um, over here on the right i'm going to change the game name to funk um, just make sure that matches everywhere i haven't tested what breaks it and what doesn't um, all of these defaults are good besides that um, i'm not going to export just yet uh, i'm going to go right here and bring it to your attention to this because this is kind of easy to miss um, this is the meat of the plugin. This is where you put your entity definitions. This is where you would define something like funk lion spawn point, where you would define trigger brush and where you would define door. Um, these are your entity definitions. Um, and we're going to, even though it's not necessary, create our own version of this configuration file. Um, and it, because it will be necessary basically as soon as you start using this plugin. So we're gonna right click, create new resource, FG, FGD, and we have a Funkado FGD file right here. Double click that. I'm gonna call this, I'll call this my FGD just to make it clear that it's not Funkado because I kind of have somewhat confusingly chosen to call this project Funk. Um, and I'm going to go into this, right? I clicked on it so I can edit it over here. I'm going to go to the FGD, change its name to Funk. And I'm going to add in the base FGD files, add element, drop down. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this. Excuse me. Drop down. <laughs> scroll to the bottom of this. If I can, then click quick, quick load. Third option down is Funkado FGD dot trez. Double click that. Now what that does is it makes it so that our FGD, my FGD, is inheriting from the Funkado FGD file. Um, later, we can extend this by adding our own entity definitions, but right now we just have the base FGD definitions that are going to be provided by Funkado. Um, so that's all good. Right here, I'm going to click export file. Once again, button. Uh, not sure what this is about. We'll have to visit that later. Um, and just, I'm just going to quickly give this a node 3D and just save it um, so it doesn't yell at me. Okay, perfect. Um, I think everything should be working. Um, and actually, uh, I'm going to do one more step, one, one step further with this FGD exporting. I'm going to put the FGD, my FGD, into the FGD file for the trench room config. Um, so putting that all together, if we now do export file, it will now create the games folder for our game inside of Trench Broom so that Trench Broom knows about our game. And it will export the FGD file, a game configuration, and an icon, um, this icon. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we've exported our user config, and now Trench Broom can know about the game, we can actually open up Trench Broom. And uh, in theory, everything will be working, but we'll have to see. There we go. Okay, so Funk is at the bottom here. Um, I'm gonna choose whatever map format valve. I think it has some benefits for 
texture formats or something. Uh, I'm going to zoom out here. Um, great, a brush. Uh, I'm just going to create some other brushes here. And I'm going to, what, select one and do like a clip tool. And uh, I'll do this one and clip it too, because why not? Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and save that. File save document, save document. I'm going to go to, where is my desktop? Excuse me? Give me a second here. What, why is it not there? World's worst pop-up? Where is it? Why are there so many things here? It was right up here, it was at the very top, okay. Desktop, funk. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a subfolder. I'm gonna create a folder here. There we go. Trench broom, lowercase, not all uppercase. So I'm gonna create a new folder here called trench broom inside of, this is my game folder, right? You can see the dot Godot and the add-ons, like that's where all the Godot stuff is happening. Create a subfolder called trench broom, create a subfolder in there called maps. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this as um, funk map dot map and I'm gonna click save okay great so we saved the file um, there's gonna be a problem though which is that if we continue to work on this trench broom is gonna like auto save stuff and make these um, like pre saves uh, that Godot is gonna find and notice because it's next to this map file that we just saved inside of the project like if we look inside the project here trench broom maps funk map if we start editing this it's going to make this folder called autosave and it's going to start saving files in there and that's going to kind of confuse godot um, so what i'm going to do is go to the file explorer find my trench broom folder go into maps i'm going to preemptively create new folder called autosave so i'm going to create this folder for trench broom go in here create new empty file so if you're on windows whatever right click um, new text file and just rename it to .gd ignore so that tells Godot to ignore the contents of this folder called autosave. Um, that should cover all of project configuration, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so the only last step is to actually build uh, that map inside of our project. So I'm gonna right click here, node 3D, add child node, funk, right? So funk Godot map. Uh, I'm gonna click build. I don't think that's gonna be enough. I need to Right, yes, okay. So let's go ahead and specify local map file. I'm gonna go trench broom, maps, funk map. Um, map settings, that can be useful. I'm not gonna cover that right now. I don't think I need to do global map file. I'm mistaken, all right, click build. Here we go. All right, so you can see that we've got that um, geometry from trench broom inside of Godot. Um, I'll do another video covering how to get textures how to get um, custom entities, trigger brushes, all that good stuff. Um, that's it for now though. Thanks for watching.